The educational system in Syria was working before the war and it was good to certain degrees. Since the war started in uh, 2012, schools stopped for three months and teachers left schools and were not able to teach at them because they were afraid of the regime to cut their salaries. School places were, were not like suitable for students because at that time they were uh, either centers for the armed group or they were targeted by the regime as it's going on even now. Till now, there is no system how to start any school. It depends on the need. For example, if you go to this area and you find that there is no school, then you can start a school. You are a teacher and you know, uh, for example, you know that your friends are teachers. You can then like choose a place and uh, bring the desks bring the curriculum, the books from, let's say, the city council, and then your school will be ready. But this is the only way, especially when we are talking about the first schools, they started with like unqualified people, but it was the need. We need schools, and there was no one to start it. <laughs> We're seeing at least 50% of the teachers being unqualified. Um, because of this lack of experience of teaching, it's meant that children aren't receiving the same quality of education that they were previously. <laughs> We are talking about people who are volunteers, who have started these schools as volunteers and are without any experience. They don't have this experience of coordinating. They don't have the experience, for example, that like uh, formal teachers before have, how to deal with the curriculum. We are trying to identify the gaps. We are trying to rebuild their capacities, especially on education and emergency, because now we have teachers uh, teaching in different contexts than before. We had poor people, but we didn't have children with psychological traumas or any kind of trauma that is affecting his mind as well.
We're working in approximately 22 schools at the moment um, throughout Aleppo, Governor Aleppo City and Idlib Governor. And we provide each school that we support a standard package, if you like. And each package includes um, the payment of school staff, including teachers, head teachers, assistant head teachers, and cleaners. We provide teacher training to improve the quality of teaching that's going on in the schools. We provide um, fuel during the winter for heaters and generators. We provide furniture. We provide teaching and learning materials to the teachers and the children. Um, we also provide um, extracurricular activities and that, again, like I mentioned, called um, psychosocial support activities, which is after school. With education, it's very important in that we provide them with a daily routine, a bit of normality like that they would have experienced before the conflict started. But security is one of the biggest factors. It's really disrupting education now. In Aleppo, we've seen a kind of surge of the amount of schools either targeted or hit by um, kind of particularly um, government forces, and it's meant that education has really been disrupted. This has been the school like two months ago, I mean before shelling, and this has been after shelling, seconds after shelling. This so, one and this one. They are from the same corner almost. Look at children how they were just like laughing and... These photos are really the shelter for me and the, let's say the best shelter for, shelter for me when I am when I am angry, when I am depressed, when I am like not feeling good, I just like go to these photos and look at their faces. Look how they were smiling, how they were doing. Look at this guy. I all the time like looked at him and told, oh, I mean, this guy will be someone great in the future. This guy, I think, was with cancer even inside the school. He had cancer before. Look at this, this one. So why, just like, why to stop them from going? Governing body for education has, um, it's uh, closed down all of the schools in Aleppo city, um, particularly at quite a crucial time at the end of the academic year when children are supposed to be taking final exams. Um, it's meant that it's very difficult to kind of like acknowledge their progress or kind of determine where they are. It's meant that in terms of going to the next academic year, it's um, really going to cause some problems as to kind of seeing where the children are at as well. People in need has really like made a great job in getting the attention of a lot of people or a great number of families to the education again and getting their attention to the importance of sending their children to school because without education we can't expect that the crisis in Syria will end one day.